everyone, Phoenix Knight here, welcome to the channel, and welcome to Mystical Munchies featuring the Dungeon Meister cookbook. Our first recipe is going to be the appetizer for this month's cookbook, the Necklace of Fireballs, aka Coconut Chicken Nuggets with Tropical Sauce. I've got everything I need over at the table, but I'm going to make two changes to the recipe. First, the recipe calls for you to fry the chicken in oil. As I'm planning to have this for dinner tonight, and I'm still trying to lose weight. I'm only down about nine pounds, but I'm just, it's making I'm making slow but steady progress. I don't like the idea of putting that much putting oil that much oil into my body. So with that in mind, when it comes time to fry the chicken, instead of frying it in oil, I'm going to enlist my air fryer to do it. Second, recipe is written. This recipe makes eight servings, and that's the version that will go in the description down below, which I'll always put the recipes for these in the description down below. But as I'm only one person, I'm going to cut down the recipe to make one serving, so I'm only going to do one chicken breast. Plus, there's the matter of how the leftover sauce is going to keep. You guys can feel free to weigh in on that in the comments down below. With that, let's move over to the table and see what all we're going to need for this recipe. Here's everything I need for the recipe, and yes, as you can probably guess, it's somewhat of a two-part recipe because I've got everything laid out. So for the sauce, we're going to need apricot preserves, and the recipe calls for sweet chili sauce, but I couldn't find sweet chili sauce when I went grocery shopping this morning. So it's regular chili sauce. Bear that in mind as I'm going through my evaluation on the taste test. For the nuggets themselves, I need eggs. The recipe calls for whole milk once again, but I'm using skim, again, in the name of losing weight, all-purpose flour, shredded coconut, cayenne and chipotle pepper. The recipe would call for veggie oil, but once again, I'm using the air fryer instead of that, and the aforementioned one chicken breast. Normally, you'd use two and a half pounds, which usually is about seven to eight chicken breasts, I would think. But with that, let's move into the kitchen, and we'll start actually putting this recipe together. So here's everything I'm going to need for the sauce. We're going to take a quarter cup each of the chili sauce. Once again, bear in mind that I'm supposed to be using sweet chili sauce, but I can only find regular. Mm, okay. Give that a quick shake. Grab up a quarter cup of that. Oh, easy does it. There we go. Spoon so I can scoop the rest out. And a quarter cup of the apricot preserves. See if this will pour as easily as the... Okay, this I actually will need a spoon for. I had a sneaking suspicion I would. Let me see if I can break this up just a touch. Maybe that will help get it to pour a little better, but I'm not willing to bet on it. Alright, here's what we're going to do then. We'll just spoon out what we need. Okay, that's about to flow over, so we'll just dump that in. Then we'll go ahead and mix it up. get that I'm gonna get that out of my get that wrapper out of my way and then get these ingredients out of my way as well 
mostly so I have more room to work with. Both of these are going to land in the fridge. Actually, all three of these are ultimately going to land in the fridge. I'll scoop that up. I'll wipe that up later. But I think that's probably about as... That's probably about as mixed up as I'm going to get it, so now I'm going to cover it. I'll maybe mix up a little bit more, but I'm going to cover that and throw it in the refrigerator until I'm ready to serve everything. So we'll get that in the fridge. We'll get these in as well. Chili sauce can go here, I guess. I just have to remember not to drink with my water. I'll give that... A quick wipe down. And then with that, let's start getting ready to make the chicken nuggets. We're going to start off by creating the wet part of the mix. So first off, we're going to take one of these pie plates and I'm going to beat three eggs into it. While also trying to keep the pieces of shell out for obvious reasons. Two, and three. Take my whisk and beat the eggs. Come on. There we go. Had to kind of stab the yolks a little bit. Usually I'm not beating in a container, usually I'm, not, usually I'm not beating eggs in a container this big. So it kind of took me a little bit of getting used to, but it's going better once I, pu once I actually punctured the yolks. All right, so we'll add the milk. Half of the flour, which in this case is three quarters of a cup. And the coconut, which thankfully this part's easy because the package, because the package is seven ounces, so I just get to dump the package in. And I'll continue to beat all of that in order to create the batter. So while I'm beating this to create the batter, I should probably, there's a little bit of a, there's actually a little bit of story here as well, a little bit of like extra flavor text, as it were, in, as part of the recipe. Looking for a wizard's artillery without all the studying? You're in luck, as wizards throughout history have always seemed to display a frankly shocking lack of foresight, flooding the world with powerful artifacts that replicate their carefully learned abilities for just anyone to fling around. One such device is the terrifying Necklace of Fireballs, capable of hurling explosive bursts across the battlefield with wild abandon. We've, replica we've, we've replicated the heat and structure here, replacing most of the chance of death with tender chicken and coconut. And this is... Okay, this seems like it's... almost getting... Maybe a little too much. It's, it seems like it's a little dry for what I'm expecting a batter to be. Admittedly, this is my first time ever making this recipe. I don't know, it just... It seems a little too... It feels a little too solid to me for what I'm expecting as a batter. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm over, maybe I'm just overanalyzing a little bit too much. But that's just my, 
initial takeaway because I know with some of the other recipes where I have to make batters like this, like my, my beer batter fish and chips, I'm going to try to get some of this out. Oh, for the love of criminy. It is stuck in there, doesn't want to come out. With my beer batter fish and chips, I normally like a little bit, well, I like a sol I like a solid batter because I find everything adheres a little better, but I think this, this at a glance kind of feels too much. Maybe I just need to add some more milk to it, but I'm going to try to do the recipe as much as I can, as much as I can rules as written, but the little birdie on my shoulder is telling me that I probably need more milk to make this more liquidy. I'll see if I can break this up just a touch, but I think that's I think that's probably where I want to be with this, so I think we can bring that out of shot for the time being, and then we'll make the dry part of the of the mix. In another pie plate, I'm going to mix the remaining three quarters of a cup of flour. Get the last of that out. Then we need, what is it, two teaspoons of cayenne pepper. This is the part of the recipe. One, two. I'm actually very nervous about how this is going to taste and how much kick this is going to have. Because spicy food and I have never gotten along. And a teaspoon of chipotle. Get that out of shot. Go ahead and mix this all up. I'm hoping it'll be spread out and I'm hoping the chipotle and cayenne peppers will be spread out enough around the will be spread out enough among the three quarters of a cup of flour that there won't be too much kick, but I'm far from sure of that. And let me get my hands in here. It'll probably be able to make mixing this up a little better. Okay. And admittedly, the air fryer might also make everything not adhere as well as it should, but I think that's probably as mixed up as everything's going to get, so I'll go ahead and wash my hands off, and then we'll start putting everything together. I will fully admit that I have never done this the method that they're describing in this cookbook before, so this is going to be a very interesting experience for me. So what we're supposed to do, and I'm finding it easier to rather than be over my shoulder, I'm going to be back behind my usual spot behind the camera, is they want us to dip the chicken pieces in the flour mixture, then the batter, keeping moisture out of the flour mixture using what they call the wet-dry method. One hand only for batter, the other for flour. So obviously based on the sides, left hand is going to be batter, left hand is going to be flour mixture, right's going to be batter. So let's go ahead and we'll do a couple of these. And then I'm off shot, but it's off shot, but I've actually got the air fryer basket in here since I'm planning on... Since I'm planning on putting the, since like I, like I mentioned at the, the outset, I'm planning on, rather than frying these in oil, air frying them. All right, so that one's all ready to go. I just think there's a little piece of chicken there. So put that in the batter. And I think here is where my instincts might be telling me that This batter is actually... I'll probably have to wash my hands between each one since the ultimate goal here... Eh, this might work. Let's see, we'll put that piece there. Then we'll go for the next one. Okay. Dip it in there. All 
I know this is not the most exciting step in the world, but it's all part of the recipe, so we'll put that in there. Grab the next piece. We'll do I'll do one more here, then we'll do then I'll do the rest of these off camera. And we'll come back. Okay, that one's good. We'll drop that in there. Yeah, my instincts are my instincts are telling me that this batter mixture the batter probably needs more milk. But we'll find out if I can trust my instincts on that front on the taste test. I'm going to wash my hands up here mostly mostly so I can shut the camera off. So I'll, I'll do the rest of these off camera and we'll come back. We'll come back when I'm ready to turn the air fryer on. Here are the nuggets getting ready to go into the air fryer. It was definitely goopy. The, the, the batter mixture was definitely on the goopy side. I'm hoping... I have a feeling I'm going to find out I needed more milk, but we'll see how these hold together. So we'll tip the camera up just a touch. Get the air fryer in shot. We'll get that all set to go. And we'll come back... We'll come back in about 15 minutes when those are ready. We'll probably give them... Do they want us to give any time to cool? Uh, remove to a... Remove to a wire rack over paper towels to drain and cool. So yeah, it looks like I do need to... I actually might not need to let it cool with the... Let it cool that way since I'm not frying it in oil. Since I'm using the air fryer instead. But I will get a plate out for those. So we'll come back in about 15 minutes. With hopefully the nuggets ready to go, we'll give them a little bit of time to cool, and then we'll have the taste test. So everything came out, out of the air fryer. It was a little bit sticky, so I might need to... Next time I do something like this in the air fryer, I might need to spray it with some non-stick spray. Whoops, didn't mean to stick it on top of the ram ramen can I'm using for the sauce. So with that, I think we can get into the taste test and see how everything turned out. So we'll grab one of these chicken nuggets, dip it in the sauce. It's actually pretty good. I was nerve. There's not as much of a kick as I was expecting from the chipotle and the cayenne pepper. I think it must have been just a case of of it being spread out over the or in the about three quarters of a cup of flour. So yeah, it actually turned out pretty well. I was worried about how everything would hold together in the air fryer rather than frying it in oil, but it seems like everything held together fine. So. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and have dinner here. So that will do it for this episode of Mystical Munchies. Next time we open up the Dungeon Meister cookbook on Mystical Munchies, we'll be featuring Summon Wall of Garlic Bread, a.k.a. Stuffed Garlic Loaf. Thank you for watching the video. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so you get my content. Be well, stay safe, take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and I'll be back with more videos in the future. Until then... Take care, everyone.